Welcome to uh, St. Edith's Parish uh, this Sunday morning. It's uh, March 4th, 2012. I'm Tom Riss, the Senior Representative of the Bologna Parish Council. And we're celebrating our 50th anniversary at St. Edith this year. And I'm here to introduce Ron Rowe and Anne and their family. And uh, they're going to share some of their experiences with the, the parish here. All right, thank you. <laughs> well, first I want to say thank you to Tom and Celeste for inviting us. I'm not sure where this is going to go, so we're just going to play it by ear uh, and try to follow the outline that was given to us to talk about it. And these are some of our children here, uh, two of our, our two daughters, our other daughter is not here, and she's away, and our son is living in Texas at this point in time. That's with our husbands, Michael and Peter, and four of five of our grandchildren here, five of the nine. So uh, they just had a lot of sugar, so <laughs> anything may happen. Um, in 1971, we moved to our current home in Livonia. And we bought the house mostly because of location. Uh, you could walk across the field and go to Taylor School, and walk across the field at a later date and time and go to Dickinson Junior High. And St. Colette would be the parish we would live in. Uh, there was no church there at that point in time. We were going to church at St. or at uh, Dickinson School. But we thought it was a great place to live because our kids could. Uh, go all the way up to junior high and we could go to church without ever having to cross the street. <laughs> and I can spot it from any distance upstairs in my bedroom. <laughs> true. It's a secret. Anyway, um, at some point in time, about 1975, we decided the kids wanted, we wanted the kids to go to parochial school. So we got with Father Van, who was the pastor at St. Edith at that point, and said, uh, we got some kids we'd like to go to St. Edith School, what kind of a tuition break can you give us if we're parishioners? And we negotiated that, and the rest is history in terms of education. They all went to St. Edith, and the girls went on to Ladywood, our son went to Catholic Central. Um, had a lot of fun doing all of that. Uh, we also had a, a nephew, our godson, Darren Del Duco, who looked kind of on and off with us at that point in time, to, went through school with our kids. Uh, his mother had died at a very early age, and his father raised him in Livonia here, but uh, kind of spent a lot of time at our house as well, kind of a foster child, if you will, but much more than that. Um, just a couple other things, this fact that um, I felt like there was a reason why we came to St. Edith. There was, um, we had been at St. Colette's and felt it was a nice parish, but we had been actively involved in what they called the Crucial Movement. It was an ecumenical movement. And it took us sort of in a different direction. And we felt like um, we needed to find a parish that had uh, cared more about the parishioners and then a little bit more of an outreach program. And it was one of the things that I was very drawn to St. Edith about, was because they had an outreach program, and Carol Savage was very actively involved. She was the head of Christian service at that time. And I don't know how many people have met or have met Carol, but she was one of the most loving, um, kind people I had ever met. And I just loved what she did here um, to help the needy. And um, that was one of the things that really touched me about seeing it and why we were drawn to it. As far as the, uh, the sacraments go, uh, First Communion, Penance, Confirmation, were all of St. Edith, uh, when possible. It didn't always fit because the, the St. Edith School at that point in time only went to, I think, fifth grade and then they had sixth. It started, I think it went to sixth grade and then later on went to eighth grade. So some of the kids made their First Communion here, and some went to St. Colette, and some went to uh, St. Michael's for Confirmation. Um, 
Um, one daughter, Helen, who's not here with us tonight, she and her husband, Michael, ended up getting married at St. Edith. The other girls got married in par different parishes. Patty ended up, and Mike ended up getting married at the same parish where we were married at uh, Precious Blood in Detroit. Uh, our first grandson and granddaughter were baptized here. Uh, and our daughter-in-law, Amy, was also made her first communion here. She was not Catholic when she uh, married Kevin. Uh, but she uh, decided she wanted to become Catholic, and she was tutored to do so under Sister Jean Ann, and uh, she's been a great recruiter because then she also had her brother became Catholic, and about a year ago, her mother and father became Catholic as well. So, a pretty good bench. Uh, many times over the years we've talked about moving. Let's move here, let's move there. A lot of our friends have moved. And I know in my heart that one of the reasons we're still here is because of the connections that we had with St. Edith Parish, spiritually as well as friendships and so on. It's been kind of an anchor for us. We made some lifelong friends here. Uh, Anne, you? Uh, yes, uh, as a matter of fact, our daughter Helen, who is not here, refers to my all my friends who are were at some time St. Edith parishioners as the church ladies. <laughs> and it's sort of a quote unquote funny little thing. Are the church ladies coming? Mine she'll say or whatever. But yes, um, we met the kids, these parents of the kids our kids went to school with and just automatically became friends. And they are truly some of my dearest friends, as one of them always says, that there's nobody else that you would rather be with than the church ladies. So it's been a, a great experience for us as well. Yeah, we've had a lot of fun with them. Uh, most recently we got them all together for the, uh, what party was that? Oh, we had the, the party that was for the church a few weeks ago. Oh, for the uh, Irish... Oh, the Irish Rovers yeah. were there. Yeah. We got a, the whole group back here. There was probably, I don't know, 10 or 12 families that used to be members here. Right, right. They all moved to different locations. I personally have been involved with serving the parish in a lot of different aspects as a lector, Eucharistic minister, taking Eucharist to the homebound, CSA worker. Worship Commission, parish council member several times, and, and the bereavement ministry team. The bereavement ministry team uh, was with Father Jim Scheich and Carol Savage, and, and that was a, uh, a great experience that went on for several years. In about 1985, I was serving on parish council, and we were having a big, long discussion about whether or not we should buy some more steel folding chairs uh, to handle the amount of people that were coming to church on Sunday in our church that was only five years old. Not this current church, but the second church that it was, it had been built. So we outgrew almost immediately. And I made a comment at the meeting, I said, there's something wrong with this picture. We shouldn't be talking about buying more folding chairs, we should be talking about having a church that will accommodate the number of people that are coming to the school, or to church. The school needs a gym, and we need a some sort of a social hall for all the other things that go on in the parish, and funeral lunches and parties and those kind of things. Our parish council president at that time, I believe, was Rose Barnes, and she said to me, "Ron, would you like to take on that assignment?" <laughs> So for about the next five or six years, I chaired an ad hoc committee that was challenged with developing a master plan for what the whole facility should look like at some point in time. And uh, worked with the uh, architects and the financial people to figure out a way to build the church that we have today. That took about five or six years to do that. 
and uh, that was a it was a great experience. Um, During those five or six years, we'd walk into church, and Rod would say to me, "There's a gym." I says, "I don't see a gym," <laughs> and there was a lot of people that did not want the gym, and it was a lot of hard work to get that that church and that gym built, but it happened. A lot of people that didn't want the third church because they hadn't finished paying for the second one yet. Too. So it was an issue, but it was something that needed to be done. About that time, right right after the church got blessed and Cardinal Shaka came out and dedicated the church, uh, the following spring uh, was our 25th wedding anniversary. And uh, our kids planned a mass for us and we had a renewed our marriage vows with Father Jim Scheich and a priest who was a personal friend of the family at that time, uh, Joe Green. And then we had uh, probably one of the first parties. That it was we, the first party. The first party at the, in the social hall that was a celebration of our wedding anniversary. That was our 25th wedding anniversary, and that's almost 20 years ago. <laughs> Something that doesn't seem right with the math on that, because it seems like we were only married 20 years ago. But uh, that's the way it is. Um, going over my numerous notes, it's, uh, it's been a real walk down memory lane doing this. It's been uh, very interesting thinking about all the people that have come to St. Edith and people who have gone, uh, as well as the clergy. Um, I think, like I said, Carol Savage, one of my dearest <laughs> people in the whole world, um, has gone to get her reward in heaven, which she certainly just deserved. Um, I've touched a lot of things here at St. Edith. I've done a couple of different things. Ron's been more actively involved in the parish than I have. Because I'm very good at volunteering him as well, <laughs> and um, but it's I think it's been a wonderful experience for us. I mean, we've done so much growth um, watching our children. Um, <laughs> walking down memory lane makes you cry. Um, we see the sacraments, um, and then to see your grandchildren doing it. It's, it's, it's a, an experience that I think everybody should be able to have happen to them. Um, I should have gone there. <laughs> uh, we, we certainly have had a lot of fun, too. Yeah. Two of our grandsons will make the first communion here. Okay. And, uh, in May, uh, one coming up from Texas and the other one is here locally. Most recently, uh, I served as a chairperson on the Stewardship Commission under Father Mike and as Parish Finance Council Chairman under Father McNulty. A lot of the spiritual leaders that have been in the parish for many years, Carol Savage, Bob Delbeck, Rick Messiak, Sister Jean Ann, Father Joe Daly, Father Jim Scheich, and, and now Father McNulty. Knowing these people have had a fantastic impact on our lives. When Father Jim Scheich announced that he was leaving the parish, uh, I was pretty disturbed with that because we had become good personal friends as well as being the pastor. And we talked about it and I said, you know, I always thought you'd be here forever. And I would be here forever. But that's not real. But I had planned on you celebrating my funeral mass when I was about 105 years old. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, maybe that'll still happen, who knows. Uh, anything else? Any other comments? I, yeah. Nothing other than 